Lemo 64 presents A play by that video review Sit back and enjoy the show Hey there, welcome to another Lemon C64 game guide and review. In this episode, we'll be checking out Swiv, developed by the Random Access team of the Sales Curve and released on their Storm label in March 1991. Swiv is a quite futuristic overhead shooter. The game opens with quite futuristic music and a great explosive nuclear explosion on the high score table and as we leave these credits to roll we'll find even more special effects and you can see the fuel injected helicopter that we can use in one player mode as a purple cigarette lighter as well as decoding breakfast TV and those little ads and insults added to the title sequence help this atmosphere and as we shall see later on this was ported and co-coded at the same time as the Amiga version and leaving these credits to roll we can even check out the Jeep which player 2 gets to control yes two players on the screen at the same time you can see the Jeep comes with full manual ignition and go faster stripes fitted as standard. Swiv does take a long time to load and by pressing fire that injects us into a second title sequence where we get to see the same high scores and this time we don't get to see the great introduction roll but the music returns and from here we can press fire to start the game itself and well from here we could do if this level would have preloaded into the C64 which it hasn't but once we play the first level once it will stay in memory and I'm pleased to say most of the levels are in the C64 version and a big chunk of the levels load with each load so that's really not so bad so let's check this game out. Swiv is a full on top down shooter and in one player mode we get to fly as the helicopter which can fly above all these buildings. Of course if you play in two player mode then the jeep will have to navigate around all these obstacles as well as avoiding the firepower. There are a number of enemies on the screen at once, not just a few, and very much like the Amiga version, we start off in a shanty town, and then we move on from there to the desert, and then over some water to a forest, and then over some more water to another forest, and on to ice levels and stuff like that. But the 64 version is very much harder than the Amiga version, and I remember playing this recently in the Amiga competition on my Amiga and managing to get through to the second level boss on just the first credit but on this game you don't get credits you just get the lives I think and if you use up all the lives then that's game over you can see we're on to the first sub boss and on the Amiga you can simply fire into the weak spot of that and destroy it but on the C64 you can't you have to wait for the head to appear and take it down manually and on the C64 it even splits up, so we have to shoot that thing all over again and eventually, well, shots on target there, eventually it will cough up some bonuses, some speed ups and some weapon power ups. So I'm just collecting the S for a speed up just to see if that makes any difference. On the Amiga we do get various levels of power up, but on the 64, well, we only get one or two and the various spread shot isn't as much as the speed up because this game runs fairly quickly you'll need the speed just to keep up even 
though we don't get music in this game, we do get a vast array of sound effects and a great blasting sound when we're blasting those guns. And that gives this game a tremendous atmosphere, perhaps heavy metal is the word as everything seems to rebound and impact off each other. Unlike the Amiga version, there are no energy shields that we can just take on and get rid of bosses the easy way. The shields come few and far between, and when we find those, it's great, but there are some safe places, and you can see going to the bottom of the screen is a safe place to avoid some of these enemies, and unlike the Amiga, we can't just attack those, no, we have to go to those safe spots, otherwise we'll get slaughtered, and you can see that happening right now. was developed at the same time on the C64 and on the Amiga and you can see it's almost identical to the Amiga even given the C64's limited colour palette. I think they've done a great job and it's very reminiscent of the Amiga. At the same time there are enough differences here to make this a different game and you can see with no continues on offer, it isn't possible to get all the way through the game like the player could on the Amiga. And you can see I've had a few tries at this game already. So, well, let's try that again. And this time, let's try to pick up the power-up from the first sub-boss from the Goose. And let's see if that power-up makes any difference. A little history about this game. The project manager and the main designer of this game was Ned Langman and he was the main designer on the Amiga, project manager on the C64. Ned Langman worked on Sun Dragon and In The Heat, of course, on the Commodore 64 for the Storm label. The code was taken over from Ronald Pickett Wisserick by Robert Henderson and his only coding adventure on the Z64 was the very Mike Minor-like The Dark Tower, which was released in 1984 through Melbourne House. And more code and some of the graphics were created by Paul Rogers, who created the front end sequence, the presentation screens, and the high score table. And he went on to code Double Dragon 3 on the C64, for Storm in 1991 and he also created the underrated Time Soldier which is a little like Commando. The graphics were mostly created by Robert Walker and he worked with Ned Langman on NARC for Ocean in 1990 and he also worked on Subway Vigilante in 1989 and games like Rodland, St. Dragon and Indie Heat for Storm. The atmospheric music they heard over the title sequence was once again Martin Walker and as we found out he coded Back to the Future and he actually started on the C64 with Rupert and the Toymaker's Party for Quicksilver in 1985 and then moved on to games like Hunter's Moon and created the music for Army Light on the C64. I think the C64 version of Swiv is much more unforgiving than the Amiga version and even though the graphics are fairly identical, I find that the helicopter moves too slowly unless you get that power-up, and it's a choice between power-ups in this game. No, we cannot pick up two together. So there are compromises, and I feel it's a shame that even with full power, this game really doesn't feel as powerful as the Amiga. The sound effects are great, and the music and the atmosphere and the presentation, but even these ground guns didn't appear on the Amiga, and they are lethal, and so little touches like that can make the C64 version harder. And I do appreciate that there are lots of vertical scrolling shooters on the C64. In fact, you can't move for those. 
And you would have thought they'd made this game slightly easier to compete with those, but no, they made this hard for the hardened gamer. So anyone who fancies the chances at these vertical shoot 'em ups should check this game out. Otherwise, it's for hardened players only. I managed to mistime that attack on the final gun, and that's got rid of it at least. And I don't think these things fire on target, they fire at the last known position. And look at that, if you stay in the last known position, they'll fire and kill you anyway. So at this point, I really should be on double firepower, but no, I've died, so I'm still on the first power up. And again, if you can survive this far without losing a life, well, I'm on my last life already, and we haven't even reached the first level boss. And we're not going to either. But you can see, staying in those safe positions is crucial, and this is certainly a lot different than the Amiga experience. And that means we get to enter our name again on the high score table. Taking a look at the scores, Zap gives with 76%. Lemon C64 gave it 79, Commodore Format gave it 88%, Commodore Force gave it 90, CMBG gave it 90, and Your Commodore gave this game 95% in March 1991. I think it's too hard for its own good, but apart from that, it's a solid game. Thank you for viewing another C64 Play Guide and Review. Hope you enjoyed this, and see you again next week, same time, same place. Thank you.